there aren't herbs that go in and kill everything like an antibiotic. And yes, sometimes, you know, that can be a life-saving thing, but I do wish there was more of this like first approach of looking, you know, what is the tissue state? You know, how can we use herbs to address this particular infection? And, you know, certain herbs are better at addressing one type of bacteria than another. So it can be very helpful to know what exactly you're dealing with antibiotics, they have this like one mechanism for entering bacteria and then killing bacteria. And the way that things become antibiotic resistance is that the bacteria develop ways to avoid that, you know, like they, they're evolving and they don't like being killed. So they, you know, evolve to not be killed by these simplistic antibiotics. And that's why more and more antibiotics are being created is because they need like different ways to kill the bacteria with plants. They're so complex and they work in so many different ways there's no like one door that the bacteria can shut to keep out herbs. Herbs have all these different mechanisms for acting against them. As an example, there's something in plants, uh, berberine containing plants like Oregon grape root, which is Mahonia, uh, or golden seal, which is a sensitive plant that needs to be used sparingly. Hydrastis canadensis is the name for that. They have this mechanism where antibacterial resistant cells have this pump in them. And so they basically like antibiotics enter the cell and there's this pump that just then sends the antibiotics out the cell and no harm done to the bacteria. These berberine containing plants actually break that pump in a ways. I mean, I think that's a very simplistic way to describe it, but essentially that's what's happening. They're not letting that happen. So, and those plants themselves are not necessarily antibiotics, right? They don't kill everything. They're not systemic in nature, but they can be used to help, you know, in some situations could be used to help make antibiotics more workable because they're breaking that um, pump system. And then another, I think even a more brilliant way that herbs can be used in the so-called like antibiotic situation is that they can stimulate our immune system. So, I mean, our immune system is just amazing. It is so incredible what our immune system does. I mean, without it, obviously we wouldn't make it long. So that is really our like number one source of, you know, avoiding these infections. So herbs can come in and they can help stimulate. Sometimes it's not even as simple as like stimulating something. Like it's not just like putting your foot on the gas of your immune system, but they do something what's called modulate the immune system, um, which means that, you know, if you gave these immune modulators to 20 different people, it's not like they're going to have the exact same course of action with each of those people. Um, those herbs and often mushrooms are immunomodulators. They're going to interact with that person's immune system and they might, you know, decrease excessive activity, which is why they're often used for things like seasonal allergies and then increase beneficial activities, you know, like increasing um, phagocytosis, for example. 